Hello, this is Dr. Morris. I'm doing an exam review for the circulatory system. The review will include both the lecture portion uh, of the exam and will also include the laboratory portion of the exam. I'll start with the laboratory portion of the exam and then we'll finish with the uh, lecture portion of the exam. The uh, circulatory system, as you recall, we talked first about the coronary arteries. And you should be able to identify the coronary arteries in an anatomical location on the heart. As you recall, I talked about the left coronary artery, sometimes referred to as the left main artery. It gives off branches to the anterior intraparticular artery, sometimes referred to as the left anterior descending artery. Should be able to identify that and either one of those names would be accepted for the anterior intraventricular artery or the left anterior descending artery. Also for the left coronary artery I would accept left main artery. Should be able to identify the circumflex artery. Also you should be able to identify what's referred to as the right coronary artery, the right coronary artery. And then you should also be able to identify what's referred to as the marginal coronary artery, marginal coronary artery. You should also, on a posterior view, be able to identify the circumflex artery. And as you can see, the circumflex artery will anastomose with the right coronary artery here posteriorly. Again, this is an illustration which shows you again the, the name, how the names can differ just a bit. Again, the left coronary artery can be referred to as the left main coronary artery. You should be able to identify it. And then also the anterior uh, descending artery or the, the left anterior descending artery as we see here, the left circumflex artery, the right coronary artery, and what's not labeled here on this illustration is the marginal branch of the coronary artery. Should be able to identify that. Should be able to identify the different layers of blood vessels. You should be able to differentiate between a vein and an artery you should be able to identify each of the layers of the artery, particularly this muscular artery which has smooth muscle that lies in the tunica media, the tunica intima which is the innermost layer of this artery, and then the outermost tunica externa. should be able to identify these layers. should be able to compare and contrast an artery with a vein. This is um, a, uh, both a gross anatomical picture of a uh, blood vessel and this is a microscopic view, shows you the uh, dynamics of a plaque, atherosclerotic vascular disease here in a blood vessel. Okay, some of the blood vessels you should be able to identify for the purposes of the exam. You should be on this picture, I'll start here. Now obviously there are some pictures that are a little more up close and I'll show you some of those as we go through. But this shows you a significant number of blood vessels. I will help you limit the number of uh, vessels that you'll have to be able to identify. Certainly you'll have to identify the carotid artery. The carotid artery is important because it's an area where you can palpate a pulse. There's a right common carotid artery and a left common carotid artery and I would expect you to be able to identify those. There is also the aortic arch, there is also the thoracic aorta, and there is the abdominal aorta. should be able to identify that aortic arch, thoracic aorta. After it gets below the diaphragm, that's a key landmark, becomes the abdominal aorta. So you should be able to identify that. Also off the aorta you should be able to identify the celiac trunk, the two arteries that supply the kidneys, the renal artery, left and right renal artery. And then you should be able to identify the point of bifurcation here from the aorta, which turns into the common iliac, a right and a left common iliac artery. And as we get further down the leg, I'll show you some other structures as well. I'll go ahead and 
just name those for you now. You do need to recognize the internal iliac, the external iliac, below the pelvic rim. This vessel changes names. It's called the femoral. There is a femoral that runs anterior. There's another femoral artery that runs deep, referred to as the deep femoral. You would need to be able to recognize the popliteal artery. And then two key points in the lower extremity. One is the dorsalis pedis pulse. The, I'm sorry, the dorsalis pedis. This is a key location because this is where you palpate pedal pulses to identify what the heart rate is. You measure a pulse. And if you compress this artery against the metatarsal bones that are located down here, you can feel a pulsation, an arterial pulsation. So the dorsalis pedis artery is a point of palpation for a pulse. Another location is the posterior tibialis, so the posterior tibial artery is another point that you palpate in the posterior aspect of the ankle joint uh, to also palpate a pulse. So you do need to know dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial. You need to know both of those blood vessels. They're important because in a clinical setting you can check a pulse there. Same thing would apply to the popliteal pulse that's located in the posterior aspect. Recognize that the posterior uh, popliteal artery is located posteriorly and then uh, also as we go back up through the branches the deep femoral and the femoral the two branches here of the aorta where it branches into right and left common iliac arteries celiac trunk need to be able to recognize as well let's come down the extremities I'll show you these again on a closer picture but you should be able to identify the subclavian artery subclavian artery as it branches away from the aortic arch, there is a right subclavian artery. This is the point at which it passes under the clavicle. Once it passes under the clavicle, it is then referred to as the axillary artery. Remember the axilla is here. The axillary artery branches further into a brachial artery that you should be able to identify on the, on the exam. And you should be able to see the point of bifurcation of the brachial artery. And you should be able to identify both the radial artery and the ulnar artery. Radial artery and the ulnar artery. So again, we see that the first branch off of the aorta, the brachiocephalic trunk, branches off to the subclavian. You should be able to identify the subclavian. Again, this is a point where the vessel will then cross under the clavicle, the sub clavicle or subclavian and then once it passes under it turns into the axillary artery and it branches it'll branch the main trunk that I want you to be familiar with is the brachial artery and then the brachial artery branches twice into a radial and an ulnar artery you should be familiar with those and these are just some up close pictures of what we already identified again off the brachial cephalic trunk branching off the aorta should be able to identify the right subclavian the axillary artery should be able to identify the brachial artery as we can see bifurcations here then you should also be able to identify the radial and the ulnar artery should also be able to identify the internal thoracic artery the internal thoracic artery and look what branches off the internal thoracic artery if you remember in the skeletal system last semester when we talked about the small arteries that pass under the rib referred to as the intercostal arteries this is because when you do a thoracentesis you need to pass the needle over the rib and not under the rib because this artery lies under each one of the ribs so should be able to identify the internal thoracic artery and recognizing that the in intercostal arteries uh, branch off of this uh, internal thoracic artery different parts of the aorta again the aortic arch the descending aorta the thoracic aorta also uh, and then when it gets below the point of the diaphragm it's referred to as the abdominal aorta now you do need to be able to identify the circle of Willis the cerebral arterial circle the circle of Willis the, you need to know the importance of the circle of Willis why it's important you also need to be able to identify each of the vessels anterior communicating anterior cerebral posterior communicating and posterior cerebral 
you need to know the arteries of the cerebral circle are the circle of Willis. You should be able to identify the middle cerebral artery, as I alluded to in lecture. This is a common point of strokes. Middle cerebral artery. You should be able to identify the basilar artery. The basilar artery uh, is a combination of two vertebral arteries. If you recall, in the skeletal system, vertebral arteries pass up the, uh, through the cervical vertebrae, through uh, those uh, vertebral uh, are through those vertebral foramen. Uh, they merge here at the base of the brain uh, into the basilar artery. So you should be able to identify the two vertebral arteries. You should be able to identify the basilar arteries and all of the vessels of the circle of Willis and the middle cerebral artery. Should be able to identify the external and internal carotid artery should be able to identify the common carotid artery, should be able to identify the vertebral artery. As I said, after the brachiocephalic trunk, the subclavian artery branches off, it passes under the clavicle, when it gets inferior to the clavicle, it's referred to as the axillary artery, you know the branches as you go below that lead to the brachial artery and then the ulna and the radial artery. You can also see the distribution of the middle cerebral artery here in this photograph. For the venous system, there are some similarities in the courses of the vessels, however the names change just a little bit. You will need to know the internal external jugular veins. There is also an axillary and a subclavian vein. Subclavian vein passes just as you saw subclavian artery. This vein is very important because uh, for providing intravenous fluids, sometimes a needle has to be inserted in this big blood vessel. It's a big blood vessel and it can uh, handle pretty large volumes of fluid. It takes a special surgical procedure to pass a needle into this. But uh, in a clinical role, you may need to be familiar with this area. Recognize, of course, that the axillary artery also lies in the same location. So it's very important that the needle goes into the vein and not into the artery. You also see some branches here. I didn't ask you a lot about the branches up here in the arm uh, of these vessels. So primarily the axillary vein here, uh, the brachial vein, similar anatomy is what you saw with the artery. You should also be able to pass uh, the, uh, uh, the vessels further down into the lower extremities, recognizing the uh, inferior vena cava, which brings blood to the uh, right atrium of the heart. And a little different from what you saw in the aorta as it changed names below the diaphragm, the inferior vena cava does not. It's called the inferior vena cava all the way up to the point of the right atrium. The superior vena cava, which drains blood from the upper extremities and the head and neck. Also, you see the division of the uh, inferior vena cava breaks into two parts, both a right and a left common iliac. You need to be familiar with those two vessels. Also, see you see another bifurcation referred to as the external and internal iliac veins and then a uh, significantly large vessel uh, which considered the deep vessels in the lower extremities would include the deep femoral, the femoral, and the great saphenous veins. You need to be able to recognize those. Um, you should also be able to recognize how the brain is drained of, of blood. There are the transverse sinus the petrous sinus, you should be able to identify. This is how blood is drained from the brain. You can see this on a lateral view as well. Some other sinuses I'm not wholly responsible for, such as the occipital sinus. I basically would like you to be able to identify the transverse sinus. This is the internal jugular vein, the external jugular vein. Internal jugular vein, as you can see, runs closest, closer to the midline. Vessels again separating the aorta, aorta into the aortic arch, thoracic aorta or descending aorta, the uh, abdominal aorta, the celiac trunk you should be able to identify. Uh, 
renal arteries would be very obvious to be able to identify. Some other branches as well that we'll study more when we study the digestive system. The abdominal aorta will then bifurcate into two vessels, the right and left common iliac arteries. Then that will even further divide into the external and internal iliac arteries. I already mentioned the internal thoracic artery and then the branches off that are the intercostal arteries. Should be able to identify the celiac trunk or celiac artery which you can see a number of vessels come off of, left gastric, splenic uh, artery, hepatic artery come off the celiac trunk. Should be able to identify that. Should be able to identify the two branches as we already talked about, left and right common iliac, and then the right external and internal iliac arteries. These are just the veins that I already went over with you as well. Again, if you start with the uh, inferior vena cava, should be able to identify its two branches, main branches here in the lower extremity, which is the common iliacs. We talked about the great saphenous, the deep femoral um, vessels uh, in the lower extremities. Another vessel that uh, uh, on the lymphatic review you can see is called the azygous vessel. As you can see, this comes off a portion of the superior vena cava. Actually courses uh, through the chest wall and drains the, the, um, the uh, uh, intercostal uh, veins drain uh, into that vessel. The azygous vein, azygous vein, should know its location. This is the lower extremity. And again, I've already shown you this on another picture, but this just brings it a little closer. External iliacs internal iliac, deep femoral and femoral, popliteal, dorsalis pedis, posterior tibial. Posterior tibial is important because you can palpate a pulse, you can press it against the lateral malleolus of the tibia bone and you can palpate a pulse. And again the dorsalis pedis is important because you can palpate that as well compressing it against the metatarsal bones uh, and you can get a pulse there as well. You should be able to recognize those. Popliteal vessel, you see a good view of that posteriorly, should be able to recognize that vessel as well. Veins of the lower leg, as I told you, it's just the deep veins that I think it's important for you to know. The femoral, the great saphenous, and the deep femoral. These are locations where blood clots can migrate, can start to grow and migrate, and come into the pelvic vessels here. Uh, so it's important to recognize those deep vessels. Okay, I'll proceed now with the laboratory with the uh, lecture portion of the review. For the lecture portion of the review, key uh, items that you need to be familiar with, uh, you need to know of the vessels, which of the vessels that will constrict and dilate and which vessels will not constrict and dilate when we talk about the vascular system. You need to know the different tissue layers of the uh, blood vessels. This includes the tunica adventitia, tunica media, tunica intima. You need to know which of those layers are missing from capillaries. You need to know in which one of those layers is smooth muscle located in. You need to know which of the blood vessels, arterial, arterioles, capillaries, arteries, or veins, which of those vessels are the blood reservoirs, blood reservoirs. You need to know the structural components of the circulatory system. In fetal development, you need to know the importance of two structures, the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale. 
and why they are important. You need to take blood vessels from the largest artery, the large elastic artery, through the uh, medium-sized muscular arteries, through arterioles, capillary venules, and veins. You need to be able to course blood flow through those vessels, whether you're bringing it from the venous side or whether you're bringing it from the arterial side. You need to know the purpose of the pulmonary vein, where it takes front blood from and where it takes it to. Uh, you need to know the main branches of the aortic arch. The main branches of the aortic arch, so the first few blood vessels that come off the aortic arch. Again, from your laboratory study, you need to know what arteries branch from the external iliac artery as the, as the vessels enter the thigh. What vessels branch off of the external iliac artery as the vessels enter into the thigh? Follow the course of the radial and the ulnar arteries. Follow the course of the radial and ulnar arteries and they anastomose at a particular location in the palmar surface of the hand. What is that vessel called? The name Palmer Arches should give you some hint. Should know the location of the jugular vein, the jugular vein, and where it courses. You need to know the uh, function of the hepatic portal vein, where it's located at. You need to know the name of the vessel that connects the pulmonary artery to the descending thoracic aorta. Look under fetal circulation and you should find that artery. Connects the pulmonary artery with the descending thoracic aorta. You need to know the specific role for the ductus venosus in fetal development, ductus venosus. You need to know the definition of atherosclerosis. What particular uh, layer of the blood vessel do we see atherosclerosis located at? You need to know the definition of aneurysm. You should be able to compare and contrast arteries with veins. You should know the importance of capillaries, the importance of fenestrated capillaries, but overall you should know the importance of the roles of the capillaries. You need to know how materials move across capillary walls, what processes are involved, three primary processes by which materials will cross uh, capillaries. You need to know how blood moves through veins and back up into general circulation. Remember we talked about the uh, pumps of the leg, the gastrocnemius muscle. We also talked about the valves in veins, why that's important. But you need to know how blood moves in from the venous system, particularly in the lower extremities, back up into the regular circulation. You need to know the definition of vascular resistance. You need to know the principle of blood flow into tissue and why levels of carbon dioxide are important. Again, you need to understand blood flow into tissue and why levels of carbon dioxide are important. You need to know what happens with parasympathetic innervation of the circulatory system and sympathetic innervation of the circulatory system. You need to know the importance of osmotic pressure 
and hydrostatic pressure as it relates to changes in the vascular system. What effect does osmotic pressure have? What effect does hydrostatic pressure have? Why is it important to have certain concentrations of plasma protein when we talk about osmotic pressure? The importance of concentration of plasma proteins. Um, you need to know uh, the importance of the pulmonary arteries and where they take blood to, importance of the pulmonary veins and where they carry blood to. You need to be familiar with the coronary arteries, be able to identify which are coronary arteries on multiple choice. You need to be familiar with the vessels that make up the circle of Willis the vessels that make up the circle of Willis. You need to know the symptoms of shock. The symptoms of shock. Uh, you need to know the relationship uh, between the subclavian artery and the axillary artery. Important landmark where that vessel changes names from subclavian to axillary. You need to be familiar with that. You need to know the branches of the brachial artery. You need to know what vessel is formed by the union of the two vertebral arteries. You need to know the landmark that separates the thoracic or descending aorta from the abdominal aorta. What's the landmark that separates that? Uh, you need to know what areas drain into the superior vena cava what areas drain into the inferior vena cava. You need to be familiar with the structures that drain the brain. Those include the sagittal sinus, the petrosal sinus, You need to know what veins fuse together to form the brachial vein. You need to know uh, the deep veins of the uh, lower leg, deep veins of the lower leg. You need to know changes in blood vessels that occur in elderly individuals. You need to know where nutrients from the digestive tract enter into circulation, a particular vein that's responsible for that, nutrients of the digestive system. And that covers all the material that will be on the exam. Uh, study all of that. Good luck on your studying. If you know that material, you should do fine on the exam. Thank you.